What's up guys, Ibadia here from Copenhagen. I'm back in Denmark after a trip to Asia, three tournaments, two tournaments in Doha and one in India. Uh, tournaments went very well, but we are here for a Q&A. So thank you guys for uh, all your questions. It's very nice that you want to participate on this Q&A. So I'm here to answer them. So let's jump to it. So I'm using the Citalia VCE here. Uh, it's a carbon one. It's actually the slowest carbon of all the Sintaliac uh, collection um, because before I was playing with the Simon Gozi SL. I believe that these blades are very good. Um, I think it's definitely the best blade of Andro. I'm using the slowest one because I believe that I need more control than speed. Uh, so it's very good. I can put a lot of spin on my service. I have a great control in a defensive game mode, so it's very good. So yeah, I'm very happy with this blade. And I'm using here, this is how you call the hybrid rubber. So you can see here, they are extremely rigid. And I'm playing with two C53 here. So yeah, I'm very happy with this blade. You know, the hybrid rubbers are a little bit uh, the new trend here. Um, it's very good uh, to put spin, especially close to the table, because now we are playing a lot, a lot more close to the table and we try to add a lot of spin with the plastic balls because there's less spin on the plastic balls. So yeah, this is my uh, equipment and I think in all the brands you can find a similar equipment than this. Uh, actually, um, I think it's Korea. Korea is very fun people to be around with. They are, they are a lot of fun. Uh, they really enjoy playing table tennis. They enjoy, you know, talking to different people. I have a good relationship with all the Koreans. Uh, Jung Jung Sik, the new player, Oh Jun Sung. Uh, so yeah, I think they are really nice people to play around all the time when you play a match with them also. Uh, they are really fair play. They always remember and also they are extremely open. But I also uh, like also Japanese. Japanese are really, really polite people and very nice to be around. They always remember the match that you play against them. They are also, you know, very easy if you ask a Japanese, would you like to warm up with me, etc. They are really not closed. They are really open. They like to try, you know, new things. So yeah, I think my two favorite is Korea and Japan. Uh, I focus a lot with my core um, and my back. So basically, yes, yeah, the whole uh, belt here, I'm trying to focus on this part. Uh, you have to be very strong here and to be able from that position to be very strong. So uh, I believe that, yeah, this is the main muscle that I focus on. And then also, you also have to be extremely uh, flexible here. So I believe that this is definitely the most important muscle. Uh, to focus on and if you have that strength here core and flexibility from this part you will be able to uh, develop all your the power that you have on the ball and to be able to move faster and just more stable actually one time i think it was in african championships quarter final against el biali it was a very imp important tournament uh, for me and a lot of points to gain and i lost 11 9 and I throw uh, my racket and I think I broke it. Uh, but I'm mostly a kicker. I like to kick tables when I'm pissed. Uh, but never in tournament, but in practice sometimes when I'm very pissed, I can kick a table or a barrier. So yeah, this is actually a difficult question to answer to, but uh, you know, when I started vlogging, I just wanted to give insight, you know, of a table tennis world, you know, uh, what we do, uh, how we prepare, how is the tournament is like, especially that you might have heard a lot of uh, players complaining about, you know, the WTT system. So, you know, I was just like, thank you for that message. So I was just like, if there is one person of chance that vlogging would interfere in my goal of qualifying for the Olympics, then I would stop because that's the main goal is to just to qualify for the Olympic Games, you know. Uh, but I, I strongly believe that vlogging itself, it's okay, you know, I'm very focused of my t in my table tennis, in my tournament, I'm very well prepared, I mean, you can see from, uh, from the vlogs, uh, but at one moment, you know, I just, and believe me, don't take it personally, but 
95 of the comments are extremely positive comment and i truly believe that you guys want the best for me but at some point you know i felt like you know i will never be two feet or my forehand will never be good enough for someone or i just had a lot of comments you know of people you know judging me and you know giving me uh, something about so why i'm playing with this rubber etc i'm just like hey i'm just one of you guys going and playing and doing with what i can the talent that i have etc so all these you know comments start to get into my head and i was just like, okay it's better to stop and then make actually vlog on my daily life how to I will prepare for a tournament uh, and then like some q a and maybe some tips that I, I think that i will start to do more often and yeah i will just decide that you know for my mental health it would be better you know to stop vlogging during the tournament so from end of february to end of august this is the period where i play all the tournaments uh, my cost was like seventeen thousand dollars i think in total um so yeah that's a lot of money so yeah i have one main sponsor and i guess you can see from all my uh, profile pictures and my uh, vlog etc it's a ple so this is the main sponsor that i have uh, it's a construction company from denmark and yeah after that that's it uh, andro helping me a lot with the equipment uh, they actually also paid uh, one pro tour uh but yeah and then after the rest of the time it's just uh, me with my own expenses that providing all the tournaments and to answer your last question the best ranked player that i beat was uh i think aruna quadri or christian carson uh they were i think 16 or 19 in the world uh, at that time i don't remember but it's definitely one of them I think what you have to do is just to make multiple of it. Uh, just, I don't know, if you don't like uh, a hook serve or a pendulum serve, then just ask someone just to give you, you know, some uh, hook serves or pendulum serve half long to your forehand and then you practice, you practice, you practice. You try to find a way to put your racket or your touch, etc. And then you just keep doing it. I think definitely the best way when you struggle with one service one receive uh etc is just to uh make it a lot a lot a lot and then to that weakness become your strength so i had actually a lot of this question and for me it's just like if you practice with a better player than you you are actually the lowest person and you actually only defend yourself at that time when I practice with Truls Moregard, really during two hours, I'm just defending myself. I'm just trying to not to get killed, to try to give the hardest spot as possible, to try to gain the attack, you know, and if I can, but the most of the time, I'm here defending myself. I'm just here not trying to get killed. And your goal, when you play against a lowest ranked player or lowest player than you, is actually to practice attacks. To say, okay, you know what, I will serve there and I expect the ball here and then kill it. And then you have to crush it. So, you know, most of the people think that, yeah, I, I think I need to practice with better players, you know, to be able to be better. Trus Morigal practicing in Eslov, in his own, you know, corner, everything working and then he's a uh, vice world champion. In ISO, what you have to do is just actually to crush people. You have to come and then gain and then try to practice attacks, try to practice your own best game you know and this is very important this is a really this is a myth of people thinking that you have to practice with better players to be able to be better so first of all as soon as i finish training uh i eat something i eat protein shake protein bar uh source of protein if you have to eat for, I don't know, lunch after the morning practice, go directly and eat lunch as fast as possible. So basically, if your meal is one hour after your training session, you need to eat something. This is very important. Second way for recovery is sleep. So if you have two practices in one day, between the two practices, you have to uh, sleep. This is very important. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever is important that you sleep. If you can more, just do it more. 
and after in the evening it's important to have minimum eight hours of sleep i know that you might expect a lot of stretching a lot of foam roller etc most important food after training because your muscles need food and then if you don't get food your body will use all your muscles to get energy from it and you don't want you know you don't want to lose muscle you want to keep your muscle fresh you want or maybe sometimes you want to gain muscle so this is very important second way is sleep eight hours of sleep it's extremely important you can stretch as much as you want if you sleep only three hours uh, the the night you will actually be very sour everywhere so it's extremely important and then after that I strongly believe that the good training session and dynamic stretching before training is extremely important. And then after, yeah, some stretching after, etc. It's it is important, but but I believe that before the practice is extremely important to uh, to stretch. When all the time I go on the tour, I see the Korean and the Japanese they stretch for one hour straight before to practice and they actually have someone you know you have i don't know how is in his phone and then someone is just stretching him like this and this and this and they just stretch for one hour before to to practice this is extremely important and then after the training they make some deep tissue massage etc you know to be able you know to recover from the training and um and then after i don't know what they do after after but me i i have you know my recovery boots you can make some ice baths uh, and yeah, but most important food and sleep. For me, it's very simple. When I, for example, I look, for example, last time I play a Wong Chun thing. First of all, how he serves and what he wants to do after his service. So, and I analyze that, I say, okay, you know, he served there, he want to step around, okay, I will try to touch short forehand. Um, and then, when I, you know, when he knows that, okay, I'm playing a lot short forehand, then I can go sometimes long to backhand to try to be able to touch his backhand. It's important to cut uh, the part of how he's playing and then how you want to play. And then, when I serve, I want to know how he want to receive. So if you want to receive with banana flick, for example, and then I want to know how we receive. So if you want to receive uh, with banana flick, for example, then I will serve long to backhand for, for, for me to say, hey, stay, stay, don't long to backhand because I want to touch his forehand side. But if his first priority is maybe to dig uh, short, we know with his forehand, then I would serve up spin, you know, to try to force him to flick. So, it's important to cut how we serve, how we want to play after that, and how we want to receive. And then, the, and then I have my tactic from there. And, and then, of course, the match changes a lot during the game. It's important, you know, to analyze that, to know what he wants to do, and what I can use in my own strength to try to uh, fuck this rhythm up. All right, guys, that's it. That's the end of uh, this q and I hope that you enjoyed it. Guys, thank you so much for this q and I think I will do a lot of it. So uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the content of this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to me. Thank you guys and see you soon.